morning everyone i'll be presenting on behalf of medicine 3 the great gatsby so it's a history of a 30 uh, of a 30 year old female mrs s from peria sangund street kalavai uh, she served a primary 31 weeks with no antenatal risk factors uh, chief complaints was she came with an unknown bite over her left thigh on 14th of her 14th morning so uh, history of resting illness she used to sleep on the floor usually on 14 523 by early morning she woke up suddenly in pain uh, in her left lateral thigh region so the fire she described was like a liquid fire sting so she immediately got up and searched around and could not find anything she noticed only mild swelling in the area and slept once the pain subsided but by afternoon on the same day she noticed a uh, redness with tenderness over the bite side with blackish discoloration uh, in the middle with serious discharge and she ha also had a low grade fever for one day so she came to cmc for further management uh, there was no history of nitosis there was no history of uh, difficulty in articulation no visual complaints there was no difficulty in uh, swallowing no breathing difficulty chest pain or palpitations no rashes or facial swelling no urticaria uh, no history of passing any red or dark colored urine no nausea vomiting abdominal pain no similar lesions of over uh, any other parts of the body so examination uh, her uh, vitals were all stable for the local examination her uh, she had a an area of about 5 by 5 cm with edema and erythema uh, warm and with warm and uh, tenderness with a blister in the center with serious discharge systemic examination was normal uh, with her uh, Her abdomen corresponding to the gestational age, thirty-seven weeks. So this was the uh, site patient came with. Uh, it's reproduced after verbal consent of time from the patient. Uh, so for the impression, the patient has come with an unknown bite with the local site reaction and fever for one day. So impression of the cellulitis was considered. So unknown bite with the local site reaction. Uh, so we considered. the following etiological differentials uh, snake bite scorpion sting centipede uh, any of the hymenoptera species bee or wasp or hornet and spider bite so for the investigations uh, her uh, she had leukocytosis with a neutrophil predominance uh, almost all other investigations are normal the basic blood test is normal with a mildly elevated alk fas uh, bleeding uh, her coagulation parameters were within normal range her whole blood clotting time was normal her uh, test was normal and the blood culture is negative so uh, an ultrasound of the thigh uh, suggested local uh, localized subcutaneous edema with a hyperechoic soft tissue in the lateral aspect of the mid thigh region suggestive of cellulitis there was no focus of any abscess so why the cellulitis what all could have been happened to the this patient could it be a snake so if, if you are considering a cobra uh, so it's usually uh, we all know about the characteristics of the snake so the patient did not have any neuroparalytic symptoms in the first place uh, could it be a dry bite could have been but uh, usually uh, cobra it usually bites from the uh, usually from daytime to early evening not uh, during uh, not a nocturnal animal uh, great yeah it's a nocturnal animal but there will be no local site reaction and the patient did not have any neuropathic symptoms also even if it's a dry bite highly unlikely because the patient had pain whereas uh, great doesn't present with pain viper usually in the open bushy grassy areas plantations and farmland uh, and it's it will always be an accidental bite it doesn't uh, deliberately come and bite you when you're sleeping so again not a nocturnal animal Uh, and uh, no sense of any hematopsy dry bite is it still possible yeah viper and uh, cobra still dry bite is possible because only local site reaction and sometimes they come uh, to search for the rodents at night and uh, sometimes it might happen so could be a scorpion scorpion usually the patient presents with severe pain with the local edema and there will be always some autonomic features present like profuse vomit or profuse sweating vomiting hypotension bradyarrhea or tachyarrhythmias and usually the patient has severe pain and if the if the venom is severe enough to cause a cellulitis the pain doesn't subside immediately like our patient had like within half an hour to one hour with the pain pain subsides and then it forms a cellulitis scorpion sting is highly unlikely because if the patient is going to develop cellulitis the venom is going to be large and the pain is going to be going to take a long time to settle and um, so with it uh, usually okay i'll come to later so can can it be a spider bite medically important spider bites very rare in india Uh, so most commonly we saw we see what in our uh, setting is the long body cella spider or the pan tropical jumping spider rarely in india also we had cases cases of tarantula recluse spider or brown widow spider not the black widow the that those indigenous species are found only in australia so even one case report from our uh, hospitalist uh, reported one tarantula bite uh, came with uh, blurring of vision and headache uh, local examination had swelling warmth and redness of the dorsum of the hand he developed cellulitis this was the picture they had this was from our uh, institution the case report so could it be spider yeah no normally spiders medically important spider bites are very rare but still couldn't be excluded because she present with a cellulitis so could it be a centipede bite so centipede bite usually causes a localized burning sensation moderate to very severe pain 
Uh, pain is similar to a bee sting. So erythema bruising can be there at the local side. Pruritus, paresthesias can be there. Cellulitis or necrosis also can be there. Dangerous complication, as we all know, sting, uh, uh, bee sting and centipede bite is anaphylaxis. Sometimes MI or hypertension, where uh, in some case reports have been documented, uh, some uh, CVS, CVS cases have been documented in centipede bite. So even if you're suspecting a serious bite, I mean centipede bite, it's uh, better to keep the patient for one day of observation and send the patient. So any of the hymenotropic species, can it be uh, in, uh, like bees or wasps or rodents? Could be because patient uh, acutely painful, but patient might not have visualized the insect. Insect now uh, swelling develops in minutes and results in hours. So in 10% of the population, it, the swelling exaggerates, swelling and redness, uh, gradually enlarging to 5 to 10 centimeter in diameter. It's called a large local reaction. So if there is a large local reaction with fever, it is suggestive of an infection of the site and it's prudent to start antibiotics. So anaphylaxis can range from 0.3 to 3% of, sting, of stings in Hymenoptera species. So cellulitis from insect bites on case series. So most of the insect bites causing cellulitis, B is like uh, out of the seven case series they have seen, B causes the most and two are from spiders and one is from mosquito also. So usual site for the B to cause a cellulitis, mostly in the lower, lower leg and the thigh. Spiders on the thigh and the hand, and uh, mosquito anywhere in the body. So most of them, every, all of them were treated with all, either a cephalosporin or a um, monobac, I mean penicillin. So for the crest guidelines for any cellulitis, any bite from a cellulite causing cellulitis. So then, if they, if they, if it's an IV therapy, they are uh, recommending flox, I mean floxacillin, and if, even if it's an oral therapy, they are recommending floxacillin only. So if it is a uh, severe or non-severe penicillin allergy, based on that, we can change it into either a uh, Keftraxone or clindamycin. So MRSA should be considered, I mean, if MRSA uh, can be considered, then it's better to add off vancomycin also. If you're suspecting any necrotizing fasciitis or cellulitis with sepsis, then it's better to add a vanc also when you're starting with cloxacillin. So for our patient, we started a piptas and uh, vancomycin was stopped on the day one because uh, she had an allergy on the day one itself. Uh, so we did a de-roofing of the blister and uh, her uh, fever settled on day three and she was sent home by day seven. So, which is fitting into our patient? Like she could have developed, it could have been a spider, it could have been a scorpion or a dry bite or even one of the bee stings or a centipede or anything because anything is fitting into our patient's history. So, we went ahead, we did the groundwork. We were, basically, we didn't want to send her back without knowing what bit her also because she can come back with the same complaints and she's carrying a 37 weeks gestational fetus. She didn't want her to come back with an anaphylaxis or another cellulitis. So, they were also not knowing about the indigenous species pertinent to their population, to their location, the colorized uh, place. So we found this when we went and did the groundwork. But yeah, again, the long lead cellar spider, not very medically white, I mean, medically important bite is not proved in India. The second thing we noticed was this one, the tree which was in their house had this and none of them knew this. So the, it could have been the bee sting that caused her to develop this cellulitis because usually, the cellulitis caused by bee sting is usually sterile cellulitis and the culture sensitivity from her uh, abscess also did not grow anything. It was sterile before even started the antibiotic. So, this was so what did we do for after that? So we have asked them to uh, advise removal of the beehive and the spider web also. And uh, yeah, it's done already. Sure. Yes, ma'am. And that, that is what for daddy office. Right. 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 Uh, that was not considered. We just found this that for him. Yes, sir. Can you please call the picture of the lesion once again? The lesion. No, the leg, patient's leg. Replacement, please. Okay. So there was no virulent discharge. Yes, sir. And what is the time interval between the bite and development of this lesion? So, the morning she has noticed the bite, so by afternoon she has noticed this. So, about six hours? Yes. So, how was the possibility of this being with the bacterial infection? Uh, Within six hours of the so called bite, she developed this uh, blister with black tissue going inside and some around the surgeon. So, uh, she came to us that same day, night, sir. So the thing is, this was this was better uh, when in the afternoon. It seems when she has noticed the swelling, it was better. It seems so. when she has come to us. Point is that the bacteria to enter the skin, subcutaneous tissue from the thigh, 
multiply the cause and inflammatory reaction within six hours of the migration. What likely is that whatever causes it, what you have in the we didn't get any yes, we did the why did you choose a very broad differential and mm -hmm. she, she was not sure sir yes. Yes. No, sir yes, sir and you put some you said saying that processing should be given Oh, thank you, Raghul. I think uh, the point that venom induced local reactions should not be called cellulitis. So sure. that should be reiterated. Oh. Even in a snake and venoming, if you have local reaction, don't term it cellulitis because although cellulitis literally may just mean inflammation of the tissue, we all attribute it to an infection rather than inflammation. Rodents are not hymenopterans. Rodents are not, sir. not hymenopterans. <laughs> now, in your uh, B slide, Okay. Uh, hornet, Hornet. Sorry, sir. But uh, there are no further questions. We'll go ahead to the next presentation. Thank you, Raghul, for highlighting the importance of field work in clinical medicine. Next presentation is by Dr. John Kurian. Uh, presentation is titled Great Imitator, and he's